presents Let's Talk Business, a talk show curated and presented by Restart India, an initiative started by Muthut Fincorp Limited in partnership with Inc. Restart India came into being during the initial days of the lockdown with an aim to address the concerns of small businesses. One of the ways we connect with our community of small businesses is through our live events. At Restart India, while we are running on-ground campaigns to support and restart micro and nano businesses, the talk shows and live events are aimed to create a community wherein the advice from one entrepreneur or mentor can help other startups learn, share views and grow. Our live events also create awareness to enable the community to come together and support small and local businesses. In this new edition of live events, we call Let's Talk Business. It is a conversation between entrepreneurs who run small businesses. We want to hear from them on how they ideated, set up their business, the challenges they faced and how they have come to be where they are now. Good evening, everyone. How are all of you doing? It's summertime, and summer across India reminds us of our fond memories that we have of our summer vacations from our childhood, visiting grandparents, spending time with cousins, running around, and yes, mangoes. But aren't the summers getting hotter? And the climate is changing as we speak. Is it the same summer and similar stories that we are passing on to the next generation? Uh, guys, climate change is real. And because of the million small things that at a macro level are causing this climate change, these changing environmental conditions are because we as humans have forgotten to live sustainably, minimally, and in harmony with our environment. It is a problem, yes. But we at Restart India believe in trying to make a difference and work towards solutions. We're proud that we can use this platform to talk about issues that help and educate so many people to make more planet-friendly choices. I'm Shraddha Narayanan, Program Manager for Restart India, and we have lined up a great show for tonight. We're going to talk about stepping towards circular economy. Now, what is circular economy? A circular economy uses various strategies such as reducing, reusing, recycling, and together eliminate waste, lower material resource consumption, and reduce greenhouse gas emissions. So that's how you know it's connected to climate change. It's a model of production and consumption which involves sharing, reusing. A circular economy is regenerative by design and aims to gradually decouple growth from the consumption of, yes, our very finite resources. I have just introduced the topic, but we have two guests today who are leading by example. Let me introduce you to our wonderful guests who would share their journey on building a circular economy. Pradyumna hails from Chennai. He has completed his graduation in architecture. He and his co-founder Mridula Mohan have experience working with different design companies. However, their attention was drawn towards litter and waste. Litter is produced in tons on a daily basis and it takes years to degenerate. This pushed them to understand the different types of waste that could be recycled and thus their company Samsara was born. Samsara makes products from recycled waste. Welcome Pratyumna. Shikha Shah is our next guest. Shikha hails from Varanasi. She graduated from the Hans Raj College and has completed her master's in environmental sciences from Terry University, New Delhi. She started her career with the CSR Ring of Reliance Foundation and was posted in the incubation cell for IIT Madras for two years. She's extensively traveled to rural parts of India for work, and this has helped her stay connected to her roots. She started Scrap Shala in 2016 a homegrown venture to make sustainable alternatives for lifestyle and decor products. She also runs a backpackers hostel, Mustache Hostel in Varanasi. She believes in bring, building value to people's lives by creating innovative solutions through her ventures. Can we please have our guests online?
Pradyumna Shikha, welcome, welcome to our Let's Talk Business and to Restart India. How are you guys doing? Hi, Shraddha. Thank you so much for such a lovely introduction. Uh, I'm doing absolutely good. How are you doing, Pradyumna? Hi, sir. Thank you for having us here. Uh, we're doing good. Thanks. And I am really, really so excited to, you know, venture into this topic with both of you. You lead such amazing organizations. And in the past, when we have spoken, I'm amazed at what you guys do and your websites reflect your true passion for the circular economy. So let's just get started and dive right in. Uh, our show is divided into five segments and each segment we'll be discussing topics that are relevant to running a business. So we'll start with the first segment, the what, when, why factor, the rationale behind everything a business does. The what, when, why factor are the foundation and the building blocks that decide the success of any enterprise, be it small or large. So let's begin, Pradyumna, I want to start with you. How did Samsara happen? Why don't you just take us through your story? I mean, uh, you know, as designers, uh, both uh, me and my co-founder, we really wanted to, you know, we realized the responsibility a designer has because, you know, from bringing things from paper to reality, uh, we have the choice of choosing materials and understanding uh, the impact that, you know, a product can have, a physical product can have. And so we thought that, you know, this comes with a lot of responsibility and uh, as designers, we wanted to do something to push uh, the, move, the topic forward and actually make something than just uh, you know, having a discussion or speaking about it. We wanted to actually make things out of space and see uh, where that could lead us. And uh, that's how Samsara was born with the idea of primarily working with uh, waste as our main source of raw material and converting that into products of utilitarian value and uh, for everyday space. Lovely. And when did Samsara, when did you uh, start this? When was the ideation and when did it actually come into being? So we started this uh, in 2018 as a side project. Uh, for the first two years, it was just, uh, you know, doing uh, things on the side uh, between our architecture practice and exploring different production techniques, working hands on with the machine to understand the different processes. How can we, you know, design and manufacture and make I would say the last three years, first three years, just about R and D uh, completely, and uh, in the last six months that we've actually been uh, you know, trying to work. Excellent! Uh, it's so nice, and we'll of course hear more about Samsara. But Shikha, let me ask you: What is the story of Scrap Shala? How did it start, and where is it now? So, hi Shadda, hi Pradyuman again. Uh, so Scrap Shala started uh, from the balcony of our house, which is in Varanasi. And it was mostly a build up for my mother who had been a very conscious person while consuming or trashing things. So we started in 2016 with a local artisan involved uh, in our work. So uh, Varanasi comes in Uttar Pradesh, which is uh, known for its handicraft, like wooden handicraft, wooden toy making, uh, handloom sari. So there are, uh, there are, you know, more than a thousand families in Varanasi who are artisanal and who have been following certain uh, skill sets from generations. But since, mach uh, since machine age came into, uh, you know, came, became mainstream and factory uh, made products became cheaper and they started competing with the handmade products, most of these artisans went unemployed. So it was easy for us to get hold of few artisans and make us work at our home and you know start with the product line which we could uh, try to sell commercially and even educate people regarding it so that's how we started uh, from the balcony of house and uh, in our five year journey now we have a decent uh, a workshop we have more than 20 artisans who are associated with us and we have a team of interns from nift and id who help us with the designing it's it's a lean business it's a small scale business but uh, i personally feel that we are going in the right direction this is brilliant i mean i'm already excited to understand and dive deeper into both your uh, uh, you know work style uh, so Pradyumna, I'll come back to you. You've worked with various architects and created products that are recycled and reused. 
Uh, can you throw light on the circular economy process that you use at Samsara and how do you design them? Um, so in terms of designing, um, what we really wanted to do was in our manufacturing process, um, create a singular product, right? Something that was open-ended. Uh, and that's where we've uh, moved on to this uh, process for compression molding where we make a flat panel, like it's a sheet. So the same panel can be used for a multitude of applications. So like for furniture, you can, the same sheet could be used for a table or a chair or a, you know, a planter box. So in that way, the manufacturing process is simple. Um, and, you know, product application was quite large. Uh, but when it came to how we really thought about the circular economy was we wanted to ensure that we we know there's a lot of waste here. So what we do is we use 100% recycled plastic to create our panels. So, you know, we, there is no other additives that are added. And uh, we just use heat and high pressure to create our products. It's made from 100% waste. And our furniture, sometimes we, we add familiar materials like wood and metal. Uh, but at the end of the day, all these products can be recycled again. The plastic parts can be taken away separately from the wood and the metal to create a uh, you know, truly totally circular economy. So where do you source these, uh, you know, you say waste and litter, so, but only some can go into making the panels that you're talking about. So where do you source this kind of waste from? Um, all of this, uh, the invisible supply chain of, you know, plastic and uh, recovery of waste already exists you know, in every city. Uh, it's just that we see the surface level, but if you uh, dig deep down, you can actually find this whole, uh, you know, this so-called informal supply chain that exists. Um, and we tie up with vendors who do this exactly. They segregate the plastic based on type of plastic. They segregated based on colors and then they further process they shred it down and they wash it and this is used as a filler in the traditional plastic industry to reduce the cost oh wow that's really really interesting to know and who are your own consumers i mean who actually buy these panels from you or do you sell them only as furniture do you make that in-house and then you sell them yeah, so the panels as such can be used as cladding for walls and fall ceiling as a decorative surface finish. And the furniture, and you can make furniture from it as well. So our main clients right now are, you know, other architects and designers, uh, furniture manufacturers. We have a lot of, uh, you know, end consumers also coming to us uh, asking that they have some products, they have sizes. And so we do everything in-house. Uh, uh, currently, we have a team of uh, people, uh, carpenters, fabricators, uh, you know, working on this. And so we do everything from supplying the sheets to a finished product. Perfect. I would really like everyone to just go to their website and check out the amazing work they're doing. And on the other side, we have Shikha. You work with artisans, like you said, and you give them the opportunity to turn waste into beautiful products. How do you get these upcycling ideas and how is it that uh, Scrap Shala contributes to, you know, the circular economy? Uh, so for us, like I said, uh, India as a country has been very rich in agriculture and handicraft. So I think you move to any region of India, you will find, uh, you know, state state based art forms, state based skill sets. So similarly, right now we have just captured Uttar Pradesh because we are situated in Varanasi and, uh, uh, you know, uh, so we associate local artisans who are existing in our own city, in our own region, and uh, we train them to work on different set of material uh, instead of, for example, a card painter, instead of working on plywood, now he's working on reclaimed wood. Uh, or a weaver who was uh, weaving with plastic threads, now he's weaving with cane thread or he's weaving with tire tubes. So similarly, we are just shifting uh, their uh, material and uh, the working style still remains the same. So uh, we have always tried to, uh, you know, uh, give identification to these artisans and most of our product carry their stories because, uh, you know, to convince a local artisans to do something which is not very... Uh, you know, which is not very mainstream, it becomes even more difficult for them, like, you know, for them to uh, start working on tire or start washing the tires and, you know, working on it 
they also don't know like if they are working eight hours in a day that you know they are doing a dignified job or not or whether who is going to buy it are people going to appreciate it so you know we have always tried to give visibility to our artisans so that they also stay in this like mm-hmm. so that's how we uh, you know keep our team intact and uh, about circular economy we try that uh, scrap shala products while making while using or even wh- while getting discarded they try to create minimum new trash i mean for example if we are working on old tires we create a furniture out of it it get used for 5 10 years and again somebody is going to throw it so the same old tire which we used while making the product is again getting discarded so mm-hmm. you know that's how we are trying to maintain the uh, you know circular uh, economy excellent and you mentioned old tires you mentioned cane threads it's so exciting i mean what are the other materials like which seemingly is trash because people throw it and if they look at your website it's such amazing products so what are the other sources of uh, well the input for you guys to just turn it into something really innovative so right now we are working with eight categories so we are working with plastic we are working with tires we are working with cardboard newspapers metal waste e waste plastic bottles uh, textile waste uh, that, that's like you know some some categories we are not going full fledged we are creating small small things so yeah that's all oh, amazing it, it's so nice i mean seemingly both of you are working on waste and upcycling and the products which you generate are so radically different and yet you are both contributing to the circular economy it's really nice so at uh, restart india i would just like to share with you guys we have come up with a new vertical of corporate gifting because we support the small and nano businesses and we were looking at putting their products into a box these are like home based businesses they are not going to have access but again they are uh, you know weavers they are artisans they make uh, really good coconut oil in 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 kerala so we are also trying to have sustainability in our corporate gifting box like one of our small businesses has handmade paper and that's where we are printing the leaflet on and we should be launching our gift box soon and uh, i would request all the audience to keep uh, you know shouting out for us and looking at our website as well but thank you shikha and pradyum it it's given a really good picture of what samsara and uh, scrapshal are all about and i think we are ready to move into our next segment called as snippets uh, both of you are entrepreneurs and like any entrepreneur when that journey starts it's not only your growth but also the responsibility of so many families that have trusted you have enabled you to walk along this path and it requires really great strength and insights and uh, we would really like to know from you guys so pradyum when you started on this journey was it a choice from the start that you were going to go on a path that was sustainable and uh, what is that one moment in your journey that you always remember and you look back for inspiration when things may be not be going that well um i mean to answer your first question um uh, i would say you know the one inspiration that i always look forward to is uh, you know how we essentially got started uh, you right because um you know it took we when i started off uh, with this we had no idea about manufacturing we had no idea about you know uh, product uh, what kind of product we're going to make we had no uh, idea about plastic um, but we anyways uh, went forward with it we thought the learning curve everything has a learning curve you know if you used to design buildings uh, if you have to design products that's also a learning curve at the end of the day so uh, we understood that and i think for us it is our ability to say okay we don't know something and let's try to learn it i think uh, that has always been uh, something that uh, you know we have taken as a positive great and uh, did you always want to be when you became an architect also did you always think that when you do do something it will be along the sustainability line uh no not really actually looking back uh, to it um, i just think like you know we are quite fortunate um, in a sense to you know have uh, you know house to have food to have all our basic taken care of and 
in a way i uh, i always wanted to give back uh, for that i think it's important uh, and so even for my thesis i did something along the lines of uh, you know urban design giving re- reviving the riverfront uh, in chennai and that essentially today uh, if you take it into uh, you know plastic you know we really want to have an impact uh, in the work that we do i think that was always something that we wanted we want to make sure that anything that we do at the end of the day moves things forward i mean it's not like we're going to as a company solve the global issue i mean but it starts the uh, talking point it starts it gets the ball rolling uh, and that's that's what you know as much as we can do. amazing thank you so much pradyumna for sharing that with us so shika i think working with so many artisans like you said that you have to really coach them counsel them maybe give them the center stage to enable them to you know feel uh, rooted to the cause so could you share some inspirational stories that still make you proud in your last 5 years journey i mean i'm sure you have many but maybe pick one or two for us and uh, share that with us sure 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 shita sure. so uh, we we really have actually lot of snippets and lot of stories because it's a uh, you know there are least machines involved and there are more humans involved so definitely it has changed pe- uh, lives of people so you know when we started like i said that we started from a, a balcony of our own house uh, and that time we used to have ipad and mobile phones uh, as family members you know there were some extra phones lying so uh, you know when we hired our painter and when we told him to work so you know there was a uh, a big problem of how to show him the references like you know how he has to make because we also didn't have any major brand to show him that okay no you know you have to take inspiration from here and start making products so we used to give them our ipad or i used to personally give my phone for 2 hours that okay you know start seeing this and or show them youtube videos so eventually now all the artisans like i think uh, 20 artisans who are uh, permanently associated with us all of them have smartphones and uh, we have whatsapp groups with them in which we work together we communicate i keep traveling uh, to different cities uh, but our manufacturing is based in varanasi so it is just brilliant to you know there are very uh, there are days which are very low when we don't have much sales and you know those are the days when we think about okay let's think about the impact which we have created and it's just brilliant to see how uh, these local artisans how these people who had basic handsets uh, you know have moved to smartphones and uh, they know that okay scrap shalas video is out, video is out they also put it on their whatsapp statuses uh, you know they are on a few of them are now on instagram also because you know they keep seeing our team making content and posting on instagram so all of them have become tech savvy and uh, you know their personal lives have grown a lot because they have sta- they have started documenting things recording things and uh, so you know that is uh, i think the coming age is coming decade is of technology and we feel really grateful that all the people who are associated with us uh, you know have come on the same page so that's very nice and then if we talk at the customer end then uh because we have more presence more physical presence in varanasi uh, so it, it's amazing that you know every day we go to office there's a carton full of you know certain uh, category of trash which we handle it it could be tires it could be glass bottles it could be newspapers so we always have four or five cartons kept uh, which you know which has come from somebody we don't know and at times we we know them also and then they message us that you know we were clearing our house we thought why to throw it let's give it to scrap shala there are some people who also sell their trash to us uh, rather than throwing it away which mm-hmm. they used to before so you know very uh, uh, again in a very small way we have changed lives of people uh, both at our artisan end and at our consumer end uh, I- this is really beautiful i mean you've pretty much created a community so it's not only the artisans who are being employed by you but also the people just because they know scrap shala is present they themselves are going to you know segregate the well litter trash which is getting made into such beautiful products and uh, giving it to you so so that's really great and i really liked your point about digitization it's so important uh we and the joy which i could see on your face that they are now on instagram and they are you know sharing the things on whatsapp 
So we took something similar in our digitization program and we tried to educate and we actually picked WhatsApp as a medium where we could educate these small businesses on you have products, you're doing it at home. How, how about you learn to put it on your status, get the reach which you need by this digitization program. So really nice. I think all ventures which they start and you really want to create impact, we share such similar stories. So really nice. And uh, Pradeep, I just wanted to have one more question. So now that you create panels, I know that on your website you sell them. Is that, do you also get orders from say large corporates or do you get orders from people uh, who are, you know, maybe wanting to build in a different way and then they use it? You're already uh, getting those kind of orders as well? Yeah, I mean, we're currently doing a project uh, for like a large corporate in Bangalore. Uh, so we're doing the cafe space and uh, we're doing a lot of work for you know other designers as well because at the end of the day uh, they are the ones who uh, introduce materials and they are the ones who design the product and the spaces with those materials so yeah we we are uh, everything is slowly picking up and we are able to you know uh, be, be becoming self sustainable great great all right, I think uh, we can move to our next segment, which is called Gyan Time. Uh, this Gyan section is where the expertise comes into picture. And I actually love this section. No matter how many guests we have had, we always have something really new and interesting to learn. So Shikha, I'll start with you. Uh, upcycling scrap, you're making these deckers, but I'm sure it must have been a tough journey. Can you uh, list four pointed lessons which maybe anybody else who wants to start their business or wants to get into sustainability and is just looking for that little motivation. If they hear you, they can just get started. So can you tell us this four lessons which you have learned and you would like to share? Definitely, definitely. So the first will be that you have to start. You know, the word startup itself says you have to start. I mean, you know, that's the biggest lesson that, you know, most of 90% of the people fail because they don't even start. And, you know, or uh, so then second point is once you start, you have to be consistent. So you have to, you know, embrace your journey. Like, like I said, even uh, in our five or, uh, year journey, there are days when our sales are very low. Uh, you know, we have a retail store in Varanasi. Uh, so we have to ensure a certain amount of sales on daily basis to keep it running. But the uh, COVID happened and it impacted the entire world. So a lot of businesses shut, a lot of people lost motivation. And, you know, it was almost like survival of the fittest situation where, uh, you know, if you had uh, courage to take up failure or courage to take up dull days, you could survive even with less cash flow, even with, uh, you know, uh, uh, less number of people associated with you uh, on salaried basis because obviously, Everybody was having a difficult time. So in that, if you can, you know, be consistent and embrace your low and uh, high days both equally, then it, it becomes, you already win. You win over a lot of people. So that's there. And then uh, you, you really need to have a strong purpose because most brands or most ideas which are not uh, very uh, strongly visioned or which doesn't have purpose, they you know, the founder or the team itself loses interest because, you know, you are again just uh, 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 doing something uh, to generate money without a soul. So mm -hmm. there will be a time where you don't have anything to share. Like, you know, like when you have purpose, you have stories to share, you have things to tell to people, you constantly figure out things also because you know that you have to reach somewhere. So if you don't have a purpose, then... Uh, less people will get associated with you uh, uh, and you know you will have very less to say or do or you know experiment in your business so a very strong vision has to be there and fourth thing i would say that uh, you know you also have to practice what you say for example uh, if i am uh, uh, you know i am talking about sustainability or using upcycle products if somebody lands up in my office or my own home it shouldn't be full of plastic or full full of commercial yeah. products. You have to love your own products. If I yeah. always, uh, you know, if I never buy things from my own brand, it is unfair to sell it to others, uh, yeah. you know. So that has to be there. moment you feel that you enter your own store, if you have a store, 
and you don't feel like buying anything uh, then you know you're not bored probably your products are not good enough so you have to ensure that you really like your own products uh, then only you know you can confidently speak about it or sell it so yeah that's all from me awesome shikha so everyone who's listening if you want to start just start second be consistent have a vision and a purpose and the last and i think the most important point be authentic and be honest to yourself and why you're starting and that's how your uh, business would scale lovely shikha thank you so much uh, pradyumna i'll come to you what are your four takeaways from your entrepreneurial journey that you've learned that you would want to share with our audience i mean uh, when we started off uh, we just had an idea of you know you making product from recycled plastic we were we were we were very white um, you know so we had no place to start we were just we were making bowls one day we were making something else another day just experiment i think uh, when when things were truly changed it was when we understood that uh, you know we have to be focused on who our customer is who do we want to sell to and then we you know build the product around it uh, because that help us really focus on okay what are the needs of the people and then how can we uh, add value to them uh, in a sense and is it uh, is it a product that they can afford so that was you know basically what uh, our biggest learning was and i mean the next one was uh, something that really uh, changed our mind about thinking about sustainable or even making products from waste was uh, we understood that in uh, in india just because a product is made uh, from waste or is recycled or has a environment has, has a positive environment to impact uh, people will not buy it. Uh, you know that was a very harsh uh, harsh reality for us um, you know because we were so passionate about it but at the end of the day uh, you know it was also price sensitive and you have to add value that has to be an additional value that we add at the end of the day. that's when they are willing to pay that additional value. so mm-hmm. that was something that we really these are two points that we really really uh, we learned over the last you know three years i would say awesome awesome so i think from what i understand pradyumna i think uh, you started with a vision and a passion but ultimately you had to focus on something and that has been one of your learnings and uh, second just passion is not going to kill it you have to add value only then people will buy it's great to have a vision but just because something is good unless it has value people will not take out their pocket and pay money beautiful lessons from both our amazing speakers and i think it's the right time we can switch gears to a video segment our next segment is called let's watch this one we usually showcase a story of a small local business which uh, restart india has helped or they have done something novel this time we have a snippet from one of our impact programs uh, so yeah let's take a look
just to set context, this was a shop small day initiative. This is one of our impact programs, which we've started at uh, Restart India. So Restart India started when COVID hit and uh, we started with the digitization program. How can we just help small businesses? We started advising them and then we moved on to digitization. Now, as the world is slowly opening up, what these small nano home-based businesses actually need is for the customers to come and buy from them. So we started this mini exhibition called Shop Small Days. Uh, we did three in uh, Kerala where we have the maximum presence. Muthut has the maximum presence with their uh, small businesses. So we started the Shop Small Days there. And it was really incredible to watch uh, these guys really come alive and uh, you know just the access to these customers. Uh, from there, we learned that maybe they need a little bit of skilling. Some guys were really quiet and did not make those sales. Some were really outgoing and open and they made their sales, maybe a month sale in one day. So we attached a skill up program. How do you display your products? How do you talk? How do you have a QR code? How do you ensure that people are at least interested? You get their interest. If they express interest, take down their number, add them to your customer base. So these are the things we do. And the one which you saw was a few weeks back, which we did for the first time in the state of Tamil Nadu. We did it in Pondicherry. Uh, so yeah, and we plan to do a lot more. And we are looking at other cities where we can invite the small businesses already associated with Restart India and more businesses. So yeah, watch out for more uh, shop small days. So any comments on what you saw, Shikha, Pradyumna? Uh, uh, so it was brilliant to see. I mean, uh, at Scrapshala also, we have a small events wing where we do uh, farmers market, flea market, zero waste events. So we understand how important it is to give a platform to homegrown businesses, uh, you know, who don't have uh, bandwidth to uh, exhibit in big exhibitions or, you know, some people don't even have bandwidth to travel out of their uh, houses. So for them, having localized market spaces and exhibitions it's it's a uh, it's the probably the only thing they have to grow so i yeah. think it's a brilliant uh, uh, it's a brilliant platform uh, to hold such events and uh, give visibility to businesses and even uh, like we were talking about creating value uh, you know localites get to buy fresh products and uh, they get to know so much more uh, you know about homegrown businesses brands skill sets of people in their own city so it, it, you know, overall boosts the local economy of the city as well. Great. Thank you so much, Shikha Pradyum, Do you have any comments on the same? Yeah, absolutely. I mean, uh, I think it's all uh, along the lines of what uh, you guys are doing uh, and what Shikha is also doing, you know, bringing uh, the makers in front. I mean, in today's day and age, uh, I think, uh, you know, we're putting a lot more voice to the people behind the product. And it's really encouraging to see because a lot of uh, art forms are, you know, on the decline. And uh, the more we can encourage people to continue that form and continue the generational, uh, you know, craft um, and uh, bringing the localized. I mean, uh, that's the biggest thing of like, you know, you, you wouldn't even know that uh, it's happening right in your own city or, it, uh, you know, things like that. Uh, these things exist. And the quality of work, you get to connect with the people who make it customized stuff. Uh, so, I mean, it's, it's, it's a great starting point. I mean, it, it really encourages and it's, it's, it's a great way to do that. And of course, from your end, what you were saying was really interesting was, you know, uh, how to improve like the presentation or how, to, how do we, you know, get the, the number? How do you speak? I think all of that adds so much value because uh, they would also be so eager to, you know, learn and. Uh, that's what we have seen with a lot of people. Like even with the, with the you know carpenters here, this is a very new material. So we're all looking at okay, how can we do? How can we test? How can we? they are so excited to do new things? You know, yeah. and uh, to implement their crafts into new things is, is the excitement that they bring. Uh, it changes uh, you know the whole energy. Yeah, yeah it, it changes lives yeah. and communities, and I think. Uh, the three restart India, Scrapshala and Samsara pretty much aligned in the vision at least to empower and bring communities together. So it's great. So everyone who's watching, 
if you've helped a small nano business in your locality to restart or you do have sustainable uh, shopping practices record a short video of the shop which you've supported post it on social media and tag us using these hashtags small business support local shop small local business support we'll feature small best small business stories that you've shared in our future live events um, and do keep looking out for a shop small day coming to your city we are expanding and we will probably be doing one every month so do stay tuned and we will announce that on our website all right i think um, the last 15 minutes of our uh, conversation can be turn towards the audience we have the final segment which is called ask me anything and we have received some questions from the audience and maybe some are just coming in to our teams so are you ready guys i'll just start with some questions uh, from the audience i have a one here from uh, ravindra in new delhi it's a question to both of you often social enterprises find it difficult to raise funds since they work in areas where the gestation period for a new product development or behavior change is very high uh, could you please highlight similar challenges that you may have faced and how you managed to sail through uh pradyumna you want to go first yeah i mean uh, it has been quite difficult uh, you know in that sense uh for for the first three years i think uh, we kept our you know bond rate very small there was really not much that we invested in it was just our time raw materials and some basic stuff so we were able to push it. only now that uh, you know the, I, when you build a business it's, it's always going to take time and especially for something new uh, it's going to take even longer i think uh, there is something we were prepared for in the start itself and uh, you know raising we have no plans of raising any funds anytime soon because um we, you know we are kind of self sufficient in that sense but uh, otherwise i think uh, it's it's something that we were prepared for uh, and we know it's going to take great shikha you want to answer uh, ravindra's question as well yeah so uh, uh, like pradyuman also said that you know initially i mean uh, for us to till now our burn rate is quite low uh, and you know we've kept our business very very lean uh, that's how we could survive in the covid pandemic also so um, i would suggest that only to everybody i mean no matter if you have financial access start lean and eventually you know uh, try to raise money i mean uh, uh there because while raising money you don't just get money you also get lot of mentorship great great thank you thank you so much the next question coming in is from anurag mittal he is from pune some people may have the vision to start a sustainable initiative but not the business expertise to execute and monetize in this case how can a person build and follow a ground up business plan I think both of you can weigh in on this. Uh, so maybe Pradyumna, why don't you take it first, and then we can move to share. Yeah, I mean, uh, you do take baby steps at the end of the day. Uh, always having somebody, you know, there's always somebody in your family or or somebody who you know who you can always reach out to. So you know, when it comes to design, we we reach out to people in the design fraternity. When it comes to business, uh, we we reach out to people. who have headed businesses or who uh, you know have that expertise uh, who started their own business uh, we kind of uh, you can't know everything by yourself and uh, if you've not worked anywhere else before uh, you're going to have to learn it on the job so speaking to other people learning from other people is the biggest uh, is the best way like she just said uh, raising money uh bring not just money just but the expertise right uh, and that's what she was very rightly said uh you know in that sense wait uh, shika you want to wait on what anurag has asked yes definitely can you just repeat the question once yeah, more uh, uh, some people may have the vision to start a sustainable initiative but not the business expertise to execute and monetize in this case how can a person build and follow a ground up business plan so that's what anurag is asking yeah so hi anurag uh, so honestly like i am an environmental science uh, post graduate uh, 
I didn't have any business expertise until now. Our business doesn't have a full-fledged business development person. So you know, it's it's the journey is always going to be a, a journey of growth and learning. So it is okay. I mean, you know, everybody can't have uh, all the skill sets. So. Uh, Everybody can't have all the skill sets, so you really one second, just one second. So oh, yeah, add. Uh, no worries, no worries, Shika. You were saying. Yeah. So I was just. That's okay. <laughs> no worries about that. I have, I have two kids in the house, so they have come back. So yeah, I was saying that it's it's gonna be a learning journey, and uh, you really don't need to worry about having all the skill sets. Like you know, somebody might be good at finance, somebody will be good at accounting. So you will eventually build a team. So you know what your strengths are. Like if you you are a product based company, uh, if you figure out your own product, that's that's the bigger thing. You know, rest things follow up. If you are a service-based company, what services you are going to, uh, you know, provide? If you figure that out, that's 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 gonna be bigger than figuring out rest of the things. And then eventually everything will set. And moment you start raising funds or getting uh, uh, people on board, uh, you know, everything will will happen. It's it's just like you know raising a baby. Uh, you know, uh, your baby doesn't come with all the education, so you put them to school. Then they learn. Then you know you give them physical training to build their muscles so you know similarly once your uh, startup is uh, figured out what you want to do then you get experts to fill the gaps which you are not aware of great and i'll just like to add to anurag that it's i think the environment which we are in now is more based on collaboration right people are open to collaborating people are ready to share information and there's so many platforms which are available where you can talk to other entrepreneurs. This is one such platform, but I'm sure everywhere in Pune as well, you must be having a lot of places where you can share. And like Pradyumna said, learning by talking to others is probably the best type of learning that you can have. So we have uh, quite a few questions. We have uh, Afrin from Hyderabad. She asks, uh, it may get difficult for social entrepreneurs to stay true to their vision and at the same time manage the profitability of their business. How can a social entrepreneur manage both? Interesting question. I would love to hear your views. So I, I'll, I'll go first in this. Uh, so yeah, yeah, that's, that's totally true that, you know, uh, to remain 100% honest to your vision with which you started, it, it does get diluted a bit as you uh, scale up. Uh, you know, because like Pratyuman was also saying that they started with a lot of products and then they eventually thought, okay, we have to work with XYZ segment and, and then they designed their category, you know, accordingly. For us also, you know, we started with a wide, very wide category. We had more than 800 SKUs and now we are trying to come down to uh, 50, 60 SKUs so that, you know, we can focus. Uh, so, uh, you know, that's true. Like as you scale up, your vision will get uh, uh, you know, uh, diluted uh, in some way or other way. And if you get investors on board, definitely it's going to get diluted. See, more people you have, everybody, you know, looks for their own benefits and which is fair also, you know, because whoever gets associated, they also need to take something out, uh, out of you. So, uh, you know, always start with a broad vision. Uh, I mean, you when you uh, make a very small vision and then there are high chances of uh, 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 diluting it completely. So if you have a bro uh, broad vision, then you can fit a lot of things. And, you know, uh, uh, with a bit of hustle from everybody, still you remain uh, uh, true to your, uh, uh, you know, purpose of your brand. So uh, so always uh, think before only that, you know, someday your vision will get shifted here and there. Understand all the pros and cons and then desi redesign your vision till you have time. So, yeah, that's that's all. From great, me. great. Pradyumna, you want to weigh in on this? Uh, yeah, I mean, uh, I mean, it's, it's part and parcel of everything. Right? Uh, like it, it's like setting a goal for yourself. Uh, but if you reach 80%, you're happy, but it's better to do that than do nothing. Um, uh, you know, so that, that is, 
uh, it's always going to be there, uh, you know, at the end of the day, because um, when you start off, you know little. Uh, when you get into it, you learn a lot more and you change the way you think. And I don't think it becomes a dilution. Uh, I think it, you focus, right? That's, that's what happens. Um, so, I mean, it's all about perspective again. Uh, you know, when you like, when you think big uh, and you think wide, uh, sometimes you need to focus on a small thing because you can always go wide uh, once you grow. Like you can always add things. One, uh, you know, like I was saying, you have to scale down the SKU. Uh, so you know, once it keeps moving, you see what works. You have data right, right now because when you start, you don't have data. You know what's moving, what people like, uh, what are their preferences, what's the price point. There is so much you don't know. And once you do learn, then you can make an educated choice. Uh, you know, that's the difference. Uh, and I mean, that's part and parcel of everything. Uh, you cannot, uh, you know, continue to keep doing the same thing. Uh, at some point, you have to pivot. Uh, some point, you have to grow. Sometimes you have to scale back. It's part and parcel of everything. And But as long as, you know, your main focus is still there, uh, you know, that's great. I, I don't think you really would change your, uh, you know, focus or your vision. Um, you would narrow it down, or you would be more specific. Great. I actually had an interesting question which I wanted to ask you, uh, Shikhar. Do you have any training for the artisans as well, like uh, something what Restart India is doing in Skill Up? Do you also have some training for your artisans? And now, now we do. Now we do have. Uh, I mean, the new artisans who associate with us, uh, we do train them, uh, you know, now because we have SOPs of different product lines, uh, you know, since we are into upcycling, how to clean different material, how to store different materials. So now we have a lot of guidelines, but uh, initially when we started, we didn't. Great. Amazing. And what about you, Pradyumna? I think all the carpenters, etc., who are associated with you, do you also have some in-house like training programs for them? Um, no, I think uh, they get more comfortable as they make up. Uh, so mm -hmm. what we do is um, we get some, we, we get some good, uh, good tools uh, for the job. I mean, that's actually, uh, you know, what we did. Uh, we started off with the basic tools and then we understood uh, there are certain better tools that are out there. And so we invested in them. Uh, after that, uh, you know, you, you could see that they will start, start experimenting. We let them experiment, right? We always say, okay, what, how do you want to do it? Uh, each person has his own way of making things. So we try to understand uh, and work with them in a sense that makes them comfortable. But at the same time, if, uh, we feel that th uh, there might be another way to go. Uh, it's all through testing. You know, you, uh, you let them experiment their ways. Uh, we show them our way and then uh, at the end of the day, that's through prototyping and once that's done, then there's one step way in which they do. So they're responsible for that. Great. Uh, I think the next question is uh, for you, uh, Pradyumna. This is uh, Nitin Vashesh from Chennai. He says, I'm an architecture student and I dream to work at the intersection of society, design and entrepreneurship. Can you please tell me who and what was your earliest inspiration to set up Samsara? Uh, our earliest inspiration was, like you said, uh, when we started this off, we really wanted to get into product, but um, you know, we wanted to change the scale of design that we were doing because we could add a lot more details in design. Uh, but before we got into that, we really set, uh, thought about what are the products that we wanted to do? Because we knew there are a lot of people making, uh, you know, wooden furniture and metal furniture and you know, other materials. And we wanted to see how we could, you know, do something different. And that's when we started to think about, okay, understanding where the materials are coming from, what's happening to these materials at the end of life. Uh, you know, what are the ecological uh, impacts of these materials that we use. Uh, now these are things we nobody questions, uh, you know, and that's really what led us to understand. Okay, wait, there's a lot of waste. Also, is this waste usable in any format? How can we do it? And so we started off the business actually as, as the recycled company where we would like in a few years have a you know a ton of different 
materials to work with. Uh, after three and a half years, uh, we haven't done scratch. So. Oh, wow. At the end of the day, yeah. Wow. But otherwise, I think, you know, that's basically uh, how we got it off, started off with Samsara. Great. So, Nitin, if you are uh, looking to get inspired, I think like uh, Pradyumna said, he's just scratching the surface. So, there's plenty to go around and you should definitely start if you're looking at working at that intersection. Great. We have one final question and that's for you, Shikha. It's a very interesting question. Uh, Reva is from Varanasi and she says, I'm a resident of Varanasi and I love your products. I also aspire to be an entrepreneur, but naturally people have the notion of taking men more seriously as entrepreneurs, especially in tier two cities. What is your word of wisdom to inspire women like me who want to be entrepreneurs despite constant doubts? Uh, so, hi, Reva. Uh, I'm happy to know that you're from Varanasi and I hope you have come to our uh, workshop and our store and seen our products. Uh, see, if you are an artist or, uh, you know, if you have skill set of making things, uh, there are a lot of spaces. I mean, even if you don't want to have your own setup, there are a lot of maker spaces where you can just, you know, uh, put your, uh, just click pictures, put your products and see the response. So uh, I don't experience you have, you have had in past. So I would strongly suggest to start lean and, you know, Test your product products in the market either by keeping it uh, uh, in some markets online market space or offline uh, aggregator. There are a lot of aggregator stores where you can you know put your products and uh, test it. So I would just say that you know moment you figure out your top products which people like, uh, everything is gonna fall in place. And we all are born in the age of technology, which is our biggest uh, you know strength. All of us. Uh, I mean, our parents' generation never had this, uh, uh, you know, this kind of visibility, which we all have, uh, you know, it's it's just amazing. I wish I could tell you how lucky we are uh, with the content, with the ideas, uh, you know, it's, it's so easy just to go on YouTube and learn something. Uh, so uh, just start, I would say just start. And uh, uh, in case you're stuck with anything, we would be happy to help you at Scrap Shala. Great. Thank you. Thank you so much, both Pradyumna and Shikha. I think it has been such an amazing conversation. I got to learn a lot more. Uh, we've just heard about circular economy. And from what I heard from both of you, you still have that much depth, which you can still go to. And, uh, you know, there's, I hope this opens up the conversation and many other people who are inspired by you come in and, you know, as a community, we can uh, change. Thank you so much for this conversation and great insights. Uh, thank you, guys. Uh, audience, please continue to visit us on our website, restartindia.in, as well as on all our social media pages for exciting updates and resources. Stay tuned for our next impact program and more of Shop Small Days. Our corporate gifting should be out soon as well. This is your initiative and these conversations are for you and we are here to journey with you. Thank you so much. Good night. Namaskar. Thank you, Shraddha. Thank you, Pradeep.